everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, I am trying something today I have not tried before. Um, going to be doing lots of things today I've never done before. I have never used a staple gun. That's a confession. Uh, I avoid power tools, anything that resembles a power tool. I don't trust myself. <laughs> I am legally blind in one eye. I have terrible depth perception and I just always assume that I'm gonna make a disaster happen. But if I wanna do this project, I need to learn how to use a staple gun. So that's what's happening. Um, I've been seeing some um, texture work where it looks like fabric. Uh, sometimes they actually just use fabric but I want it a really flowy effect. So you can either use clay to do that or this technique. Uh, so I'm going to try this. Um, this is just some window screen, just some wire mesh. Uh, you could probably use the plastic too. Uh, I'm gonna try to get my hands on some of that and try that as well, just to see, uh, cause you know, there are some pretty pokey bits using the metal, so be careful. Um, get little uh, metal splinters. So you do want to be careful. I did just cut this with a regular pair of scissors. It cuts very easily. And I have here some plaster wrap. I just got this at Michael's. Um, you can also get it uh, on Amazon. But... You can use this for all kinds of stuff. It's pretty nifty. So that's what I'm going to be messing around with today. You can see that I have cut this screen a little bigger than the canvas. It's, uh, I could have possibly gone a bit bigger than this, I think, maybe. But we'll see. It's my first time. So we're just gonna play with this. I'm using a canvas that has some blemishes on it. Uh, you know, wanted to do it on a smaller piece just in case I don't do it right. So, you know, test small. It's always a good rule of thumb. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards and each technique card has an associated video on YouTube uh, that gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint brand, color, consistency, the recipe, and of course the technique, all of the things I can't fit onto a tiny card. Uh, this is a picture of the painting in that video. This box contains a tip for that particular technique. And this is the color palette that was used in this painting. These two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, uh, or you can build off of those colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. Use all of the colors or just some of the colors, mix and match the bonus color palettes with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluga.net, and also at amazon.com. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is staple the wire mesh to my canvas and I'm going to start see these little bits this is why I'm I don't know if you can see that it's why I'm contemplating if the plastic would be better those things I'm, I'm just collecting them in a little cup so I can toss them you start with your middles all the way around and that is going to give you the best, most even uh, outcome. Oh boy, I'm scared. There we go. Oh, that was scary. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna speed this up because it's loud and you don't want to hear this. But I just thought I would let y'all witness my first time doing that. Um, I was brave. So I find that um, applying the screen as you would if you were applying canvas uh, 
to your stretcher bars to do the center of each side to get it evened out and then uh, coming in and doing the rest. And then as for the corners, you know, I'm just I'm just kind of trying to work it, trying to get it to, to where I want it. Uh, trial and error. When I discover the best technique, I will surely let you know. I'm still trying to figure that out. But I kind of just did it like a, like I was wrapping a present. Tuck it in and fold it over. Because it's going to get covered with the plaster bandages. So that's going to smooth it out. But uh, yeah, just repeat the process. Okay, I have this stapled on there. Yes, it is a bit raggedy, jaggedy. Uh, but that is okay. We're going to cover the back up with the plaster as well as the front. But in the meantime, let's play around a little bit and try to get a bit of a fabric-y effect. Okay. So I'm moving to high speed because this does take a bit of time. It takes some patience. Uh, it takes a lot of trial and error and wrangling things. What um, I learned here is that um, the aluminum screen, when you pinch it, it does crease. That would work really well um, in using it like water to get those those creases but I wanted it to look more like fabric so I kind of want it to have a bit more of a rolling effect so I'm gonna try this again but with some plastic screening and see if that does uh, what I'm going for um, but also I want to uh, do a piece where I'm utilizing that creasing factor and and I turn it into water I think the creative juices are flowing every time I learn something new it gets my creative juices flowing and that usually overflows into other areas so like I'll, I'll probably dive into this and then start writing songs <laughs> that's how that's how I operate and I've been kind of in a creative funk and I need to uh, dive into something new because I need to get the juices flowing. So I hope you come along on this journey with me to, to work in some new areas. Uh, I'm not giving up on pouring, but I just need to, um, I need a kickstart. And when I learn something new, that's what happens. But I have lots of really cool ideas um, incorporating texture into the pouring, so. Bear with me. I, I have to get the ideas of flowing and then actually bring them to fruition. But I think this is going to open up a lot of creative ideas for me. So I hope you join along. Okay. Well, I think for my first uh, go at it, this is um, good enough to work with to get started to just kind of get the hang of using the plaster, get the hang of manipulating the uh, wire mesh. So, uh, on to the next step. All right, so I have my plaster bandage, plaster wrap here, and it comes in a big roll, as you can see, and I'm going to cut strips of this um, gently. This appears to be very messy, do we note it? I'm learning with you guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut thin strips of this so it's easy to work with um, on there. And then I'll be back for the next step.
okay, well, at some point my phone uh, cut off or I forgot to turn it on or something. Uh, but we are on to the next step. <laughs> we, I am taking the pieces of plaster bandage, just running it through the water, laying it down, and then just basically painting it on, spreading out the plaster that is mixed into that gauze. This is basically just gauze that has already been pre-treated with plaster. You wet it, you smooth it out, and it gets hard. That is the process. And then there's some pieces, parts where um, the strips weren't long enough. They're super easy to cut. Just cut them to how you need them. Easy. And you can overlap them. That is totally okay. And just spread out that plaster. This takes about 20 minutes to harden, and then I'll, so I'm going to do the whole back, and then I'm going to go to the front. So I'll continue with this, let it dry, and then we'll come back for the front. Back up to you. Okay, so I feel like this has set up enough that I can start working the other side now and start laying it down on the top and sides. I'm going to try to just tuck it in where the folds are. smooth it out and repeat this process until your piece is fully covered if you have some some folds that are proving to be challenging you can cut into your strips to make it fold easier Okay, this is what we have going so far. This is not exactly what I was going for. There is a learning curve, y'all. Anytime you try something new, you learn things. Um, what I learned so far is I needed to start with more of the mesh to begin with so I could get more folding action. 
Um, I want it kind of more of an undulating type effect. This actually kind of looks like um, water, sort of. Uh, I'm not mad at it. But uh, one another thing that I learned when I'm laying down the plaster bandage, you know, there's a weave. So if you have like a north, south, east, west weave, I find that the coverage happens faster and more evenly if I go on the diagonal. So the places where I did the diagonal, it's like a nice um, even coverage. And then the places where I wasn't doing that, it's a little bit holy. That's okay, because we're gonna come back and fill that in once uh, once this is fully dry, so I'm going to let this dry for a bit and then come back in for the next step. Okay, so this has had a chance to harden up and I'm going to put down my first layer of Forbidden Frosting. Uh, if you saw the flower that I did in the last video, I used, um, I made a big bucket of this. <laughs> don't know, <laughs> I, brought, I don't know how, if I'm going to use all of it. Uh, however, what we have is uh, spackling paste, pat plaster of Paris, wood glue, white paint, and a bit of gesso. And it is just a, a nice thick concoction. Um, I did add a bit of water to it. I may need to add more depending on how smoothly this goes on. And it's going to take a couple of coats, um, at least three, to get the coverage that I am looking for. But you can see, you just paint it on. If you wind up with lumps, it's okay because this is going to get sanded. But we do want this to go on um, evenly. So I'm going to put you on high speed and do a coat of this. This process is not difficult. It is just time consuming. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you get it right. So the being patient with yourself, being patient with your project, you're going to have a much better time and a much better result. So uh, this is an exercise in patience. Okay, so I have my first layer uh, of the Forbidden Frosting down. Um, I have seen lots of different recipes for this uh, as far as what you can coat it with. Some people just use a watery mix of plaster of Paris. Some use a watery mix of a spackling compound or joint compound. I'm kind of doing a hodgepodge of everything. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, in the other videos I've seen doing this, they've done at least three coats of uh, this and or something like this and then sanded it down to make it nice and smooth. We'll see if I'm happy with just three coats. Um, there are some strings kind of coming loose from the gauze and the plaster wrap. Uh, do not pull those strings. <laughs> don't, pull, don't pull those strings once they're down. Uh, that didn't go well. Half of what I do is, is, is learning what not to do so I can tell you what not to do and uh, don't pull the string. All right, I'm gonna let this sit and I will be back in a few. Okay, this is one coat. It is hard. You can still see some of that uh, gauze texture in there. So I'm going to do um, at least two more coats and we'll see where we are with that. But this is what we're working with so far. Okay, uh, no reason for me to show you. You already know how to do the, the layers, so I will just do that and uh, bring you back. Okay, my piece is dry. I've done three coats. There are some lumps and bumps in there that I want to smooth out. 
So I'm going to do that with, I have a sponge here. This is the fine grit sponge and I have some uh, sandpaper. Uh, it was 320 grit, I think, um, but it's an extra fine. So I'm going to get the bigger lumps off with the sponge and I'm going very, very lightly. I'm just using this on the biggest chunks, super light. Um, oh, I almost forgot to put on my mask. You want to wear a mask, um, a particle mask. This is going to kick up dust. Uh, is, if you're working with pigments, if you're doing anything like this, any time you're working with something that creates dust, you want to wear one of these because once something gets in your lungs, it's not coming out. No, they aren't comfortable. Yes, it makes it hard to talk. However, I'd rather it be hard for me to talk for a couple of minutes than hard for it, you know, for me to not be able to breathe uh, later on in life. So I'm going to continue with the sponge until I get the major lumps off. And then I'm going to come in with the fine grit and really just smooth the whole thing out. Again, I'm only using this on the big lumps and very, very gently. Okay, I'm gonna continue on and then I'm gonna bring you in for the next step. Okay, so here is where I am at. Um, it's pretty darn smooth, uh, but it's not as smooth as I would like. I really wanted this to be super, super smooth, but here's what I learned. So there were a couple of spots where I started to sand down to where the fabric was. Um, so probably I would do, um, an extra coat for the sanding um, aspect of it. And I would be a lot more careful how I'm putting it on to uh, make sure I'm putting it on as smooth as possible. So there's as little sanding as necessary needed. But for my first try, I'm not angry at it. And I'm gonna put down a coat of gesso. So hopefully these areas that are sticking up from where I got down to the gauze. Naughty, naughty. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that will smooth those out. But now I know for next time. And also what I realized while I was doing this is that I probably should have put on my hardware first. And then, I don't know. I don't know. I guess maybe Maybe I could attach the hardware inside there. I hate to attach the hardware before I do the art because I don't know if I will feel differently. Once it's finished, I may want it to hang differently. So, uh, but that's just something to consider. Um, yeah, okay, so now I'm gonna lay down my gesso uh, and smooth this out a little bit more and you can sand gesso so you know if I wanted to build this up with a little bit of gesso I could do that and try to smooth it out but I'm gonna give myself some grace here this is my first time attempting this so this is all a learning process oh another thing that I kind of figured um, this little sanding tool is absolutely perfect uh, I barely even used this it's perfect because you can get super detailed with the tips and it's very flexible and 
so if if you have streaks that are going this way which is kind of how mine mostly were going then going the opposite way is going to smooth it out the fastest so that's another little tip that i kind of figured out in my travels all right let's lay down some gesso okay i did just give my brush a quick spray just to dampen it up it just helps things helps things go more smoothly And I may wind up doing more than one coat of gesso here. Uh, you know, this material is very porous. It's very absorbent and it's going to soak it up very quickly. So if it needs more than one coat, that's okay. It's expect it to be honest. So I'm just going to continue with this and then I'm going to bring you back for the next step. Okay, so I've got two layers of gesso down here and uh, it's smoother than it was. I think on the next go around, I will have a very, very smooth consistency uh, or surface, I should say, not consistency, because uh, you learn, you learn from your mistakes. And so I have... And now I'm going to paint this black because I'm going to put some of the uh, stick up pigs in hoity toity on top of the black. And hopefully that is going to showcase a bunch of the colors. This is a chameleon pigment. And so it has multiple colors in there depending on the exact angle that you're seeing it. And I think with all these angles, I should get something cool going. So painting it black and we'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I have painted it black. Now it kind of looks like black satin, but I'm going to add hoity-toity. Uh, so I took some of the uh, Josonia uh, gloss varnish added some of the stuck up pigs to it, mixed that together, added a bit of the extra heavy gel gloss. It was kind of hard to mix. I would probably just use heavy gel gloss. The extra heavy might have been overkill. I should not have had to work that hard to mix it in, but you can see maybe the flash on this is really, really cool. It will become evident once it's on here. Oh boy, I'm a little bit nervous. Oh, ho, 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 this looks so cool. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys can see it yet. I'm seeing so many different colors all at once. This is working out exactly how I wanted it to. I love when that happens. Oh, oh, the people at this little piggy are gonna be really happy because this is super cool and a really awesome way to showcase these pigments and the magic that you can get from them. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I'm going to need uh, a whole lot of uh, these stuck up pigs, y'all. Just send me a boatload because <laughs> I'm going to be obsessed. Wow, 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 wow. Let's see if you can see this. Don't know if that's showing up the way I'm seeing it, but I can see all of these colors. 
I will find a way to show you this in the final shot. Maybe I might have to take it outside or something. I definitely think I'll do two coats. When I did the flower, two coats was too much because I wanted that background to show through. But I think in this case, two coats is exactly what I want. I want it to be really evident. Oh, oh, this is so cool. Oh my gosh. This is a naughty spot right there. I'm not wanting to stick. Very strange. So if you wanted to find a way to use these pigs, <clears throat> these stuck up pigs, you feel like it's very expensive, man, using it like this, it's gonna go a long way. I'm gonna have plenty of this left over. I could probably do several of these paintings with what I just mixed up. I could not be happier. I'm over the moon. This is so cool. All right, I'm gonna keep going here and I'm gonna bring you in for a close up when I'm done. Stay tuned, y'all. Okay, y'all, here it is. This is not varnished yet, so it's gonna look even better once it's varnished, but um, huh. yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for. Look at that color shift. How cool is that? It looks different from the angles of viewing. So one side, you kind of get more green, blue, purple, and then from where the light is hitting it on this side, you get more golds and oranges and magenta, all with one color, hoity-toity. So very, very happy with this. Head on over to Fluid dash art dot co to get yourself some of these pigments the link will be in my description box below i hope you learned something i sure did i learned a whole lot very excited about that um i'm going to be doing this with uh with all of the stuck up pigs because i want to see them like this i want to see all those colors at once it's so cool so You'll be seeing more of this. <laughs> um, do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. Also in the description box will be the links to my affiliates and coupon codes, fluidart-co being one of them. Also, you will find, I'm just mesmerized. <laughs> also, uh, in the description box, you will find a link to my website, ginadeluca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration cards for sale. You'll find the link to my Patreon. Join us there. We have weekly Zooms and there's exclusive content. There will be a step-by-step -step, uh, for this technique coming up uh, in the Patreon very soon. And uh, last but not least, uh, you will find the link to 
Our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art. Join us there, post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. That is just so darn cool. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. Oh, just look at that. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. That is it for me for today. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.